welcome to episode 93 of Regen Rovers. We're creeping closer and closer to that 100th episode, aren't we? And I still haven't decided what I'm going to do for it. A couple of people have asked if there's going to be something special. There will be, but I haven't decided yet. So I'd better get my thinking cap on and come up with something creative. Anyway, today we've got two games. We're playing Portsmouth in the league at home. I always like to take Portsmouth on. They're just down the road from me where I live and uh, I, I feel like it's a big game. I still see Portsmouth as a big club, even though they've been relegated to League 2 in real life and been there a few years now. I, I do like the Portsmouth badge as well, this one. It's, it's nice. It's simple. It's, it stands out. And we're also going to be taking on Frickly Athletic in the FA Cup first round. It's a replay. We uh, somehow only managed to muster a draw against them at home, which was very embarrassing. Uh, they're in the regional premier division, so they're the division below the National League South and North. I have no idea who Frickley are, where they are based. In fact, I'm going to have a look. They're based in South Elmsall, West Yorkshire. Well, there you go. They were founded in 1910. But we, we should be beating them. Their key player, Sean Greening, actually looks all right. He's got some potential. A left back, and we know what our left backs are like this season. They are atrocious, technically very poor, uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the case of all my left backs I've ever had on this save. Anyway, how have I been getting on then? We are top of the table, you may have noticed, and I have played a few games since the episode where we got thrashed by Blackburn but managed to defeat Brentford in dramatic fashion. Uh, we actually lost on penalties to Ipswich Town in the Checker Trade Trophy. And the Checker Trade Trophy is strange because if you lose on penalties, I think you get one point. And if you win on penalties, you get two points. It's a bit bizarre. Um, they actually took the lead in the injury time of the first half. But Craig Palmer, who is our top goal scorer this season, continues to impress. There's so much competition up front that if you don't impress, you're going to be out the door and someone else will come in and, and score a goal and replace you. But Greg Palmer, great finish there from a Francis Arthur Owusu assist. Unfortunately, we did lose 3-2 on penalties. It wasn't, wasn't the greatest penalty shootout from us. Arthur Owusu and McGuigan scored for us, but Holland, Palmer and Barber, they all missed their penalty, so it was pretty poor. We needed some zealous single, that was the problem. We did, we, I think we were the better team in this game, so a bit unfortunate not to get the win. And Stephen Dean had another poor game, 5.8, as did Fook Chon, a 6.3. Spencer Drew wasn't great up front either. It's the Checker Trade Trophy, so it's not the end of the world. We have been knocked out of that competition, so we can't defend our title anymore, I'm afraid. But I think that's probably a good thing. We can focus on the league this season and try and get promoted. We followed that up with a 2-2 away draw against Preston North End. They took the lead in the 63rd minute, but we got back into it with Francis Arthur Owusu. They played the same formation as us, 4-3-3, and we, we managed to just about get a draw from this game. It was a, a game of very few chances. There was only one half chance in the entire game. That was a brilliant goal from Arthur Owusu, though, to get us back into the game for his fifth goal of the season. Unfortunately, they scored an 80th minute goal, but luckily, in the 91st minute, Larry Uda saved our bacon. Arthur Owusu with the assist and Uda found the back of the net for his seventh goal of the season. Back to winning ways though against Chesterfield at home and Spencer Drury in the 81st and 84th minute. Towards the end of the game we, we struggled to break them down but eventually we did. The top goal scorer from last season was on fire today. He got man of the match. Uh, Des Sheehan playing in this game actually managed to get an assist. Uh, this was Dibber running through it into Spencer Drury and the keeper really should have been saving that at the near post. But Spencer Drury is not going to complain. And then the 84th minute, just three minutes later, we confirmed victory. Des Sheehan placing it through to Spencer Drury. He ran through and finished calmly into the, the left-hand side of the goal for his seventh goal of the season. Our strikers are scoring goals. It's, it's going to be interesting to see who actually turns out top goal scorer this season. At Palmer scored against the Luton Town. He scored the winner after Francis Owusu missed a penalty. Um, game of lots of yellow cards. Pretty standard stuff for our games, isn't it? But luckily, Craig Palmer was able to win it in injury time of the first half. Gerard Fisher came back into the team and got man of the match today. He, he either gets man of the match or he ha has a terrible game. Look at that. A fluky goal. Near post. Palmer didn't mean that, but it's his eighth goal of the season. And I'm not going to complain. Uh, but yeah, like I said, Fisher and Walker played today and they were very solid. Uh, there's been a couple of injuries at the back. Jonathan Edwards has played a couple of games and done pretty well. 
Danny Boy has played. Uh, but I don't know why he didn't play in that game. Unfortunately, we did lose 1 0 against Exeter. It's very rare for us not to score a goal, but we just couldn't break them down against a very tired Exeter team, as you can see. Good display at the back from their defence. And 53rd minute winner, Stephen Dean, another 5.8 in this game. I don't know what is up with him. I know the problem with our fullbacks is that we don't have any wide players protecting them. So we've got wing backs and, and wingers doubling up on our fullbacks and murdering them. Now, this, the sensible thing to do here would be play either 4 4 2 or play some wingers rather than three up front. But we're so lethal going forwards with our three up front. If I change it, suddenly our whole ethos. The, whole, the, the way we play will completely change and we might not be as successful. This is generally successful and I'm sacrificing my fullbacks, but for the greater good in a way because we're so good going forwards that it doesn't really matter that the fullbacks are having poor games because we are generally winning the majority of our matches and we did actually get back to winning ways with a 2-1 win against Bradford City. Luckily in this game, Stephen Dean did do all right. 7.2, another yellow card, but another man of the match performance from Gerard Fisher. He scored the opening goal as well. His first goal for the club. It was a fluke. It really should have been Luke Holland's goal. He hit it and it just came off Fisher's chest uh, into the back of the net for his first ever goal for Region Rovers. We went 2-0 up through Patrick Dibber. So our strikers didn't score today. A couple games without our strikers scoring. McGuigan threw to Dibber and it was a good finish at the near post. They got a goal back, but we held on for a good home win against Bradford. This was disappointing, though, against Frickley Athletic. We should have been absolutely murdering them. We had 35 shots to their two, but we only, con we did we only created half chances. 58% possession. Jack Young, he got an assist, but he was guilty of missing opportunities, as was Lee Orford and McGuigan. Francis Arthur Awusu came on and played poorly as well. It was Oli Barber that saved our bacon in the end. But Tim Green at right back, another bad game from him. Danny Byron Edwards played this game. I played a second string team essentially. And it just wasn't good enough. So I'm going to play a, a better team against Frickley in the replay. And maybe leave the likes of Jack Young on the bench. If we're winning, you know, 3-0, he can come off the bench, can't he? His rating was boosted by the fact he got this assist. He did quite well actually. He put a ball in. And Oli Barber at the near post got his first ever goal for Region Rovers. It bounced off both posts before crossing that line. I went overload in this second... Uh, to be honest, they went 1-0 up and I went overload from that point onwards. I was just annoyed. And it, we probably had a lot of shots from outside the area as a result of going overload. We were desperate to try and get a goal, but we just were just terrible at breaking them down. So an embarrassing draw. And we actually managed to get a draw against Charlton Athletic, but one on penalties. And it did confirm our elimination from the Checker Trade Trophy. But it's okay getting a draw and winning on penalties, I think. Lee Orford scored his first goal for a long, long time. I'm pleased with him. He, he came into the team because of injuries. And, yeah, I'm happy he got a goal. He did play very well against Frickley, but he, it was a tap-in from a Spencer Jury cross today. And like I said, we won on penalties. Sibs Ellis in goal for another penalty shootout win. Garber and Orford missed penalties, but Jenkinson, Drury and Walker, uh, it was enough for us to, to win 3-2 on penalties. So we did unfortunately finish bottom of the group, just below Brighton, who we lost against in the first game. So Charlton and Ipswich qualify. It doesn't matter. Like I said, we can concentrate on the league now. And today we've got Portsmouth. Uh, who we've been very successful against. We've won four and lost once against Portsmouth in our history. They are mid-table, 14th. We are top of the table with a game in hand as well. Two points above Blackburn Rovers, who we got thrashed by. Cristiano Ronaldo getting some revenge over me. But we are still above them in the table. So this is the team I'm going with. We're going with Furt Kachar and goal. Dean at right back. We really need him to improve because he was phenomenal last season. Easily our best player. Been capped by Northern Ireland a couple more times this season. He's got five caps in Northern Ireland. Maybe he's just playing badly because his head's been turned. Maybe he wants to go to a championship club now or something. Who knows? Uh, it's probably because of my tactic, let's be honest. I know we're just very exposed down the wings. I'm sticking with Fisher at centre-back alongside Reese Walker. That seems to have... Like last episode, I was saying maybe we need Danny Byrne and Reese Walker. And I, I went with that. Danny Byrne... 
either got suspended or got picked up a little knock and it enabled Fisher to get back into the team. And he's won his place back because he's been brilliant over the last few games, as you can see from his average rating. Jenkinson's playing left back. He has been slightly better than Booty. Not much better, but slightly better. In the middle, we're going with Dibber, Paddy Murray, because Luke Holland is... I think he's just come back from an injury. He's a bit tired. Garber's playing as the deep line playmaker. He's, he's played pretty well there most of the season. Not so good over the last few games. And up front, we have Dup. We're going... No, we don't. We don't have Dup. We have Dap because Orford's in the middle. Unfortunately, Udda is injured for another two weeks. McGuigan is now injured for five to six weeks. Really bad injury for him. Uh, Jonathan Edwards is also injured. Uh, third, fourth choice centre-back. And Luciano's picked up his second injury of the season. So he's out for another few days. We've got Arthur Owusu on the bench. He's a little bit tired. He's just come back from injury himself. And Brady Chick is the other striker option. Here we go then. I am going with our defensive tactic, the away one, because I've been using it at home lately just to try and show up the defence. It kind of has worked. Portsmouth are playing the same formation as us though. That's, that's interesting. See how they get on. Okay. Come on, guys. Let's, uh, let's put in a good performance today for the fans. If you can smash that like button once again, that would be very much appreciated. That's Foot Kachar. Wanders back to his goal line. Okay, off we go. This is a big game. We've done very well against Portsmouth over the years, but I still see it as uh, a tough match, even though they're mid-table. Stephen Dean has got injured already after eight minutes. And we don't have a right back because we've got Booty on the bench rather than Tim Green. So, duh, that's a bit of a blow, although he's been awful, of course. We're going to have to play Danny By, I think. Right back. Yep, on comes Danny By, the captain. Here's Jenkinson, who makes numerous mistakes in games, according to my assistant, but has been slightly better than Booty over the season so far. Here's Paddy Murray. This is nice possession from us. Mohamed Garber back to Jenkinson, lumps, lumps it up to Orford. Murray's now on the ball. He's found Garber, would keep an hold of possession nicely. Here's Spencer Drury. Can he put it across the goal? He's won a penalty. And we've not been that successful at penalties this season, actually. Francis Arthur Wusu's missed one, or two, possibly. But it's Spencer Drury, who's not known for penalty taking, but he's the best one on the pitch. So up he steps. Come on. It's straight at the keeper and onto the post. We are missing so many penalties at the moment. We're missing Larry Udder, who is our best penalty taker. Oh, that's disappointing from Spencer Drury. Hit it straight at the keeper with no power. But it still almost went in. Here's Danny By up the pitch. Now Garber. Can we... Get a goal from open play this time. Palmer jumps over his man. Here's Lee Orford. Oh, it's wide. So close. So close. Don't know when the last time he, he scored in the league. Obviously, he scored in the Checker Trade Trophy. But I don't know when his last league goal was. We've been the better team so far. We've had two clear-cut chances. Drury's missed one. Orford's missed the other. And I'm going to say I'm disappointed. Orford's going to actually come off. I'm going to throw on Brady Chick. He's not really played for a long time in the first team, but let's give him a go. We're going to go to counter rather than defensive. Here we go then. Second half, we should be winning this. I don't know what's happened to our penalty taking. We've historically been all right, despite not having great penalty takers. Remember Grant War? The, the great days of Grant War when he would take our penalties. Legend. I think he only ever missed one for us. He scored about four or five. We dropped down to second place as it stands, but we've won a corner. Garber whips it in, and Walker heads home. Oh, Reese Walker with his ginger hair, or perhaps he's bold. We don't know. Is it a ginger wig? Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> he's ginger there. Look, he's getting up. Brilliant header into the back of the net for one nil. Lovely. Jenkinson's on a yellow card and not having the best again. I'm gonna. Hmm, do we take him off? Or do we throw Arthur Owusu on for Spencer Drury? I think he's looking motivated. We need to keep him on. He's our best striker, isn't he? Let's bring on let's bring on Booty. We don't want to get a red card here. How long will Steven Dean be now injured? It's been a, a very quiet half, but Portsmouth have a late chance. It's whipped across and it's saved by Furt Kachar. Can we hold on now for a few seconds? Portsmouth have actually had more shots than us, but we've not really seen them. That was their first chance of the game, really. It's been a pretty dull game by our standards. But there's still time. Although that was a poor pass. And surely 
the game's just going to fizzle out now. Danny Bight, there we go. Full-time 1-0 win, a really important win. We should have won by two goals or maybe even three goals with Orford's chance. But uh, do I? am I harsh? Yeah, that's fired them up. That's good. That was the right thing to say. We got away with that. Everyone's fired up. We are, we're still two points clear of Blackburn Rovers with a game in hand. This has been a fantastic first half of the season. There's still a few games before we reach the half point, or the halfway point of the season. But so far, it's going to plan. We've lost four games. We've only drawn two games. That's the most important thing, I think. We're turning draws into wins. We are getting destroyed by certain teams, Blackburn and Wimbledon. Uh, the other two defeats were just 1-0 defeats, actually. But our wins, some of them are fantastic, aren't they? We don't win by that many goals, though, most of the time. We've not won by more than two goals, I don't think, this season. Plus nine goal difference, though. That's decent. Top goal scorers in the league by quite a distance. So Danny Ertar, uh, Stephen Dean, out for two to three months. That is a blow. Even though he's had a poor season, it is a blow. But maybe he'll come back stronger. Maybe he'll come back like the old Stephen Dean. I have loaned out Johnny Collins, by the way, our defensive midfielder that we signed in the summer. He's gone to Northampton Town in the Vanarama National League. And he's done okay so far in his two games. Mohamed Garba, 8.1, and he got the assist. That was his... Uh, yeah, he was man of the match, I think, for that game. I think the defensive tactic might be the way to go in the league at the moment because it's just making us a little bit more solid. We're getting a few clean sheets. Fisher and Walker, they're starting to impress at centre-back. Against Frickley, though, we will go attacking. We have to. Under-23s managed to win again. Jack Young with another goal for the under-23s. There's Sheehan and Lee Orford as well. Lee Orford's been excellent for the under-23s this season. If we just have a look, you can see top goal scorer. Lee Orford, 16 goals. It just shows the difference between him and our other strikers, I think. But 16 goals in 14 starts and 7 sub-appearances. Jack Young is actually second. He's still scoring goals for the under-23s. Brady Chip's got five. Mohamed's only got three. It's, I think it's over for him. I've not been able to sell him, though. But I don't think he's ever going to be a star for us. Assist-wise, Lee Orford at the top 11 assists. He's insane. He really is. His average rating is ridiculous as well. I don't know why no one wanted to buy him in the summer. This should be a big win against Frickley. There's no excuses today. We were awful at home, but we've enabled them to have a, another payday, I suppose, and helping them out. See... I, I, there's someone that has commented a couple times over the last few videos saying I needed to buy a striker because Garber uh, wanted us to improve our attack when I signed him, re-signed him in pre-season. But he's not moaned at all. He's been happy. Maybe because he's got first team football more this year. But you can see here, my uh, player liaison, liaison officer is, doesn't think Garber's worried about the, the lack of strength and depth in the team. So I'm glad I didn't sign a striker just for him. Especially as we've got so many strikers anyway. So this is the team I'm going with to take on Frickley. We should be thrashing them. There should be lots of goals today. I've made some changes though because we should be beating them, whoever we put out realistically. Uh, Sivzelis is our cup keeper most of the time, so he's going in goal. Tim Green has to come in for the injured Stephen Dean. I'm playing Jonathan Edwards at centre-back alongside Gerard Fisher. He's wanted first-team football over the last couple of years. He's been a little bit unhappy at his lack of first-team football. So this is his chance to shine. He's, he's played pretty well in his three appearances so far this season. So he does deserve an opportunity. We've got Danny Bay on the bench just in case. We'll give Reese Walker a rest. He's He's been ever-present for the last few seasons hasn't he so of course he did get injured this season but I think he needs a rest Booty's come in to left back we're going to give Oli Barber a go in central midfield Holland I think is our best option in the middle so I'm putting him back into the team Garber keeps his place as does Palmer and Drury but Francis Arthur Owusu comes in up front alongside those two still waiting for Udda and McGuigan to come back from injury of course here we go then we're up in Yorkshire for this FA Cup replay against the team we have to be beating. We really do. There's no excuses. They, of course, will be playing a more defensive tactic against us. 4-2-2-2. So they're not going to be exposing us down the wings, hopefully. For the simple fact they're not playing wingers. Um, but at the same time, we're not going to be exposing them through the middle. Maybe they're playing that on purpose. Perhaps we should attack down the wings. Let's not, expo let's not exploit the middle quite the same now. Uh, we could exploit the right flank with... Tim Green, in fact, and play him as a more attacking wing back defense. We'll play, go for we'll just go for full back 
attack and expose them down the right. Because in the old days, he used to get assists galore from that side of the pitch. And he did last season for Dagenham and Redbridge. He was a absolutely insane for them last year. Scoring goals, getting assists, man of the match awards. He got 18 man of the match awards for Dagenham last year in helping them getting promoted. So there's some sort of quality there. Perhaps we should be playing short passing, apparently. Let's go with that then. More direct short passing be expressive we've not scored in 23 minutes it's ridiculous here's booty on the ball thrown it into to luke holland back to booty three to mohammed garba lumps it up to francis who does well spencer drury now here's craig palmer who should be scoring and he does we're one nil up a lovely attack from us from all the way back in the left back position from booty to craig palmer to get his ninth goal of the season He's still our top goal scorer. Lovely assist from Spencer Drury as well. He's made the most goals for us this season. It's usually the other way around, isn't it? Confident display from us. We're only 1-0 up, but we have dominated the game so far. We should be winning by more, more goals than this, but it's it's fine. As long as we get through, that's the main thing. To guard against complacency in the second half, guys. I'm going to have to bring Jonathan Edwards off. He's quite tired. So we'll bring on Danny By, the captain. It's not been Francis Arthur Awusu's day, but we'll leave him on for now. And we will continue to attack in the second half. Here's Holland into Garba. We're on the attack again. Francis Arthur Awusu through to Oli Barber. Lovely ball to Tim Green. This is what I wanted. It's a brilliant ball in. And Spencer Drury at the back post. That's what we wanted. Tim Green cross to the back post to Spencer Drury. That was a lovely assist from Tim Green. That's the Tim Green of old. We haven't seen that for a while. Barber playing it out wide brilliantly. Good vision from him. And it's a great, it's a great finish at the back post from Drury. Getting in the right place at the right time. And we're 2-0 up. And this should be comfortable now. I think it's time to give Jack Young a go. We will take off Arthur Owusu for Jack Young. And we're playing him as a deep lying forward. In fact, we could swap him with Palmer. Palmer can just play as the target man. Jack Young as the advanced forward. His original role for us in the team back in the day was as an advanced forward. Actually, I think we had like a strikerless tactic at one point, didn't we? He was playing um, as the shadow striker for a while. 30 minutes to go. It's been a comfortable game for us. I was hoping for more goals. Perhaps there still will be the odd one. Here's Jack Young on the ball, finding Mohamed Garba. Back to, to Barba this time. We're going backwards, but perhaps we will... Oh, that was poor. <laughs> Garba hit Holland, uh, but uh, Barba, sorry. Here's Barba again. Lovely ball through to Jack Young. Maybe he'll pick up another assist. He does. Craig Palmer gets his second of the game and his tenth of the season. Jack Young with another assist. His second in the FA Cup. Uh, well, he's good against weaker opposition, I suppose. Perhaps he does deserve another chance in, in the first team at some point. Although all the other strikers are playing so well, we can't really drop them, can we? I'm going to bring Diaz on for, for Garba for the last few minutes. 3-0. It looks much better now. Five minutes to go. Can we get a fourth? Here's Barber on the ball. It's over to Jack Young again. Is he going to get another assist? It's blocked this time. Here's Oli Barber. Booty. Good ball in. Oh, Spencer Drury gets another goal. His second of the game. Ninth of the season for him. 4-0. Comfortable win all round in the end. Pleasing stuff. Oli Barber once again splaying it out wide. He's been creative in that midfield role, hasn't he? And it's a good finish from Spencer Drury. Clinical from him. Jack Young doesn't get a goal. But he gets an assist. That's the, that's the next best thing, I guess. And it finishes 4-0. Tim Green, man of the match. Perhaps I need to play the fullbacks like that then. That's what we used to do back in the day. But then again, we're playing weak opposition. Though, so it's not something we can really focus on. But perhaps I do need to try and exploit the wings a little bit more than I do. I've been exploiting the middle this season. Tim Green's changed his hair again, by the way. Uh... There we go. Keep it up. Very impressive. He's going to be in the team for the next few next few weeks, I suppose. So thanks for watching today's episode, guys. It's been another two wins from us. Really pleasing stuff. We've got Peterborough and Swindon next in the league. And then Southend United in the FA Cup second round. Uh, the next episode, uh, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere in the future, of course. But we've actually got five away games in a row. That is ridiculous and very unfair. In fact, it's, it will be our six, six away games in a row by the time we've taken on Scunthorpe. That's really unfair. So we'll be probably playing the, the defensive tactic. Until next time, guys, enjoy Football Manager. I will see you very soon.